here to introduce Visual Studies um, to you today. Um, I'm one of the staff of Visual Studies. So here's, um, this talk now is a little bit about the program just to introduce it to you so that you know about it or that so you can tell your kids about it. Um, so basically I'm going to give some details about the department and then um, feel free to ask me questions. Now I know that um, because I'm speaking in English um, that may present some difficulties for some people so um, please feel free to, um, I'll give you, you know, feel free to uh, ask me at any time um, any questions if you're not clear what I'm saying and if I'm talking too fast let me know. Okay, so um, Visual Studies is um, a department um, that's headed by Dr. Raphael de Klerk and that has, um, today I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm Carol Archer and uh, Zoe So is the other um, Visual Studies staff member who is here with us today. So um, we're here today to talk to you and let you know more about Visual Studies and um, there's actually six of us in six of us teaching in the Visual Studies department. There's um, it's a quite small department that's been going for only I think it now is um, about eight or nine years. So we're a very close department which has worked out a very we think very interesting kind of combination of things that we teach. So I'll explain more about that. We've had a chance to start from the beginning and work as a team to build up the best um, program that we can. And we've talked a lot with students, had a lot of feedback from students, and so we've actually developed things really in response to student feedback. Um, here's some more people just coming along. Okay, yes, visual studies. Okay, so here's a picture of some of our students. We take about 30-something um, students every year and um, the students, um, we'll say more about this, but we think um, we have a very lovely culture in visual studies. It's a very friendly department and we really build strong links with our students and, um, and as you can see, what a lovely bunch of students they are. So, what is visual studies? This is probably one of the things that you really want to know. Um, we're a very interesting department in that we're not an old-fashioned art history department. Um, so we're not a department that just does art history. At the same time, we're not um, an art school, so we're not a department that just does art practice. We're a combination of four different areas that we believe um, work very, very well together to give students a really good all-round understanding of what art is. So those four areas are art history, so students learn a lot about the history of art, and we specialise really in Western art, but also Chinese art, both those two types we specialise in, but we do other kinds of world art, so many courses um, will look at um, art from around the world, especially when we're looking at contemporary art. And, um, but we do specialise in Chinese and Western. Okay, it's, a big, it's a big field, we don't try to cover everything in detail. Um, film studies. So we have courses as well in film and we have a particular specialty in um, documentary film, but we have courses where students learn about the history of film, they learn about documentary filmmaking, um, and, and they do that. Um, we have aesthetics. So um, in aesthetics, students learn about um, those big philosophical questions that are very important. For example, why is one thing art and other things not art? Why is something beautiful according to, or why is it not beautiful? So aesthetics is really about those deep, big ideas about what makes something art, what is beautiful, what is balanced, some of these big questions that are really very important, especially these days because so much art, many people look at it and say, come on, it's not art. Okay, well, what makes an artwork? What makes an artwork different to something else? These are the sorts of questions that get discussed in aesthetics. So for people who've just come in, our department 
involves four different strands. Art history, where you learn about Western and Chinese um, art history in particular. Film studies, learning about film, history of film, documentary film, um, general engagement with film. Aesthetics, what is art, these kinds of philosophical questions. And research expression. Research expression is the fourth component. Research expression, we can call it art practice because those courses involve things like drawing or electronic media or having courses with the artist in residence. And today you have an opportunity to go and visit the artist in residence in her studio and see what she's doing. We always have one artist in residence all the time. Um, but research expression is, we're calling it research expression for a special reason. It involves making things, but it also involves thinking about the theoretical or the, or the conceptual reasons, um, thinking about how we make things, thinking about what those things mean. So it's not simply um, if you go to a hobby art class and you learn how to draw, so you learn some skills. It's not simply skills, it's research expression because you are doing, you are using skills, which you do learn, to create artworks with a certain idea in your mind. Okay, so we've got these four things and we try to integrate the four. So a film studies course may have a component, a small component, where you make a documentary. But we are mainly a theoretical department. So if you wanted an art school education, if you wanted the sort of um, studies where you really get a, an all-round um, knowledge of art practice, so you really want to be a maker of art, then this is not, this is not necessarily the course for you. Okay? What you get is a kind of education um, that's going to just wait while some people sit down. Please have a seat. Welcome. It's not easy to find your way around this campus, is it? I see a few people with their maps. Do you find it okay to find your way? For me, it's not too bad because it's very, you know, it's not like Hong Kong U or something that's like a maze, um, you know, but um, it's still sometimes particular rooms can be a puzzle. Yeah. Okay. So. Just for people who've just come in, I won't repeat everything again, but we've got four components in our um, visual studies course. You don't end up being a specialist. You know, you're not doing only art history, you're not doing only film, you're not doing only aesthetics, you're not doing only research expression. You're doing some of each, and our aim is that you get a really all-round, integrated understanding of art. Because you learn about art from different points of view. You learn about it in terms of big ideas, what is art, you learn about it in terms of the history of art, you learn about it in terms of uh, film and, and the impact of film on the world, what film does, what films mean, and you learn about it as someone who makes art and who thinks about how to make art and how to express ideas through art. So integrating those things. So we have these opportunities for conceptual and historical learning and the course is mainly conceptual historical. It's not mainly art practice. It's only about a quarter art practice, three quarters theoretical. You learn about it also through internships. So you get opportunities, students have opportunities to go and work with different organisations, and I'll say a bit more about that in a minute, but different arts organisations, there are experiences doing those things, and service learning. So service learning is about helping the community, using art in the community to to do things that can help others. So at Lingnan we have a, a, um, a strong belief that um, universities are not just here to um, serve themselves and serve their students, they're here to serve the community and for us to participate in making the world a better place. So we try to find the, um, find the ways that we can use what we learn and students can use what they learn to give something to the community and in doing so they learn as well. So these are opportunities as well. So the priority areas, we have certain areas that we're kind of giving extra focus to and those are Chinese art. So we have a lot of um, skilled, uh, very, very highly skilled people who teach in the area of Chinese art, um, contemporary Chinese art as well as uh, the whole history of Chinese art. Environmental aesthetics, that area is really about, um, um, it's, it's really about thinking about what beauty might be or what a good environment might be in terms of 
changes that we can make to the environment or in terms of appreciating the environment. Art and well-being, we have courses that are about art um, and healing. So you may realise, and if you've ever done art, you know that doing art can be a very, can make you feel happier, can make you feel calmer, can make you understand yourself better. So we have some courses about art and well-being, about how art can help people who are who are um, who have certain um, problems or who have certain difficulties, maybe because um, of um, injuries or because of certain certain things. So we have art and well-being courses and museum studies. So these are specialty areas. Okay. So our ethos, so our general general kind of feeling or the general kind of mood that we want to create in our department is. Um, we want to have a sense of community, so we do have a sense of community. We want to have a lot of dialogue between students and between staff, so we really encourage the students to talk to us and to tell us their thoughts. And we change courses all the time because of, you know, when people tell us what they think and what they need, um, and we talk amongst ourselves about how to continuously improve. Uh, we do believe in doing things because we believe in them. So we're all quite passionate about art. We, we love art, we love what we teach, and, um, and our students do too. So, um, so that's the kind of um, feeling there is in our department. We try to help each other, help students. So if a student isn't doing so well, normally we'll, we'll notice. This happens right across the university. I'm not saying we're the only ones. I mean, if you know anything about Lingnan, you know that this is the kind of thing that, that we try to do in general. You know, we try to help students um, to to, um, to do what they can do. So if somebody's not coming to lectures, we try to find out, you know, do they have some problems or can we help them? You know, are they, you know, are they unhappy with the course? What's going on? So we do try to make sure that everybody is, is okay and help each other. Generosity, we try to give what we can give um, and encourage students to do so as well. And we try to create opportunities for students. So we watch students after they leave from visual studies and we try to if we can find opportunities that we can help them with or tell them about things, we, we try to do that. And um, Ms Zoe So, who creates the um, internship opportunities, is always looking for ways to help students get chances to work in different organisations, in the arts world particularly, so that they have more, um, more opportunities. So as you can see, we're trying to open lots of different doors. So a little bit more detail about those different kinds of doors. Oh, exchange opportunities. So you may already know that Lingnan has a policy of trying to give at least, our aim is to give at least half the students in Lingnan an opportunity to go abroad and study if possible. I'm not sure if we're quite at that aim, that 50% yet, but certainly more and more students are going and a lot of people do go to exchanges. So, you yeah, have a seat please. Oh look, these, these people here, let me introduce. <laughs> Them. These are current students of visual studies and they'll be here to also answer some questions for you after I finish talking in Cantonese. But they're examples of our students, so I'll ask them to introduce themselves briefly later just by saying their names and saying hello. Okay, and then they'll, they'll talk to you more, so thank you. Okay, so we, we have exchange opportunities, so students will go and study if they, if they um, are successful in their application to other places. So we have links with other universities where art is being taught. So these are some of the places, some of the countries, and some of our students here themselves have um, you know, plans for exchanges or have been on exchanges, so you'll be able to talk to them about that. That's our student Terence there, who went to Denmark. Okay, so internships. So there's an, a course that you can do where you do an internship and you actually, it, it fulfills the requirements of the course. So you can have an internship where maybe you're working for somewhere like the Cattle Depot Art um, uh, Complex, um, where you might be learning the skills of, um, you know, managing a gallery, of doing email, of doing publicity for exhibitions, these kinds of skills. And we've had, and so we have ones where you, you get credit for a course. We have other ones where you just do it and you don't get credit, but it's an opportunity for you to get that work experience. It's something you put on your resume. When you go for a job later, you've already got experience at working in a gallery or working on a festival, a film festival, or working in yeah, many galleries here, film things. 
um, there's been um, yeah the Hong Kong International Art Fair. So very valuable um, experience in the community, in the world of work. So we make these opportunities as well, and that's a serious part of what we do. Service learning, another door that can open. Um, so this is an optional component. So if you're doing either of these two courses, you have the opportunity to do service learning, and that means that you may use your um, what you're learning in that subject to go to a community group and work with that community group to share some skills or knowledge with those people. Okay? And that would be part of your assessment for the course. Nobody is forced to do this, it's something that you can choose to do, and many students choose to do it and find that they gain a lot. So they, they write about what they've learned through doing those things. So we have students actually, one student now, um, Jana, um, is now um, doing an MA in art therapy because she did this sort of thing when she was with us and now she's in the UK learning about art therapy. Um, in fact, she went on an exchange to, um, uh, to I think it was Denmark. And while she was there, she was working with music therapy because she's a very talented musician. So people who were um, in an old people's home were very, you know, um, maybe a bit lonely or just life was a bit boring. She was doing music therapy with them. They were feeling better and then she decided to do further studies. So, so these, these things can um, really help people in their career and help them find what they're interested in doing. So with service learning, you learn through experience. You learn through actually working with art and doing things with other people. And you learn through not just book learning, not just, you know, the old idea that knowledge is something that the teacher just, like this teacher just talks, you know, very, you don't really learn very much when people just stand and talk at you like this. You learn things when you do things for yourself. So when you actually go into a... Um, um, a, a real situation and you share art skills and you see what happens and you get feedback, then you're really learning. So we really believe in experiential learning. And that's one of the reasons we include practice components in many of our courses as well and why we have um, courses in making art. Because you learn a lot about art through doing art, not just by looking at art or talking about art. Um, so that you see the impact of art on life. Um, on people's well-being in courses like environmental aesthetics if you can change an environment for example if you can change a hospital and make a hospital into a really beautiful place um, people will get well I mean there's been evidence of that people can see green trees they're more likely to out their window they're more likely to get well so by changing the environment the way an environment looks or the way that um, an old people's home is set out you can change people's lives so art has a real impact so these opportunities give people a chance to experience that. And they become connected with the community, so later if they want to have, you know, go for a job in that field, they might already know some people through having worked with them. So, some examples of art therapy. Students working with these children, but the children seem to have been photoshopped. I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> anyway, um, some other examples of people working with the community in service learning. So you could be going into a community and bringing art, um, art to those people and those people are gaining tremendously through that process. Okay, so students' thoughts about things like that, you know, because they worked with people who had, um, who were intellectually disabled, but they found those people were very sweet and very nice, something that they hadn't known. Um, they found that people from other cultures were just like them because they worked with people from other cultures. Um, they noticed more about ethnic minorities in Hong Kong because some of them worked with ethnic minorities and they realised how lucky they were. So these kinds of things, you don't learn through someone just telling you, oh, by the way, you're lucky. You learn through actual, actual experience. Okay, studio practice. So in studio classes, Students have the opportunity to put together conceptual learning and theoretical, and sorry, and practical learning. So this particular picture is of a course um, where students learn about contemporary art, and they learn about some of the kinds of themes and ideas that are present in contemporary art. Like many people in contemporary art may be interested in the idea of identity, 
or sexuality or history and how history can be changed, things, these sort of concepts. They might learn about that and look at some art that's happening in that art, but then they'll try making art of their own that deals with different concepts, like concepts of um, identity or con other concepts that they've studied. So the studio practice classes give students a chance to develop skills, but more than that, develop, um, develop learn how to express those ideas, those important, um, that creative energy to channel it to make a picture that communicates that. So they, they learn those kinds of skills. And um, in particular, we have drawing courses, electronic courses, digital media courses. Okay. And the students will often hold exhibitions. This is Zoe So, who teaches um, in the area of um, digital media, electronic um, arts, and also looks after internships. So you'll see her here today when you go to the gallery. Um, she's one of the team that's working today. She's also a wonderful artist in her own right. We recently exhibited at the Hong Kong Museum of Art. So students make some incredibly creative and interesting works. Okay, we have artists in residence, so today you have the opportunity and our friends at the back here can guide you um, to the artist studio where you can meet the artist and see what, what her work is like and I really recommend that you do that because I think her work is amazing, um, very, very interesting. She's a very interesting and inspiring person so I, I welcome you all to, um, to meet her. Um, every year we have two artists in residence, so in one, the first semester we have an, a local artist from this part of the world, Hong Kong, and from the, for the other part of the year we have an international artist. So we try to give students the opportunity to meet artists from different parts of the world, and every student has the opportunity to take one studio practice course with the artist in residence. So they get the chance to um, work with an artist who's come from um, either Hong Kong or another part of the world who's a well-established artist who has a very interesting art practice. So we had Jack Picone, um, who's um, an Australian documentary photographer. He was here before. He's actually coming back to work with us again from January for a year. Um, he teaches, um, yeah, he taught documentary photography and the students did wonderful work with him. So we've had many different um, people as you can see and that's just a marvellous opportunity for students. They get to work with that artist, they get to learn about a different um, area. So sometimes it might be a photographer, sometimes it might be, uh, currently we have um, an artist who's doing ink painting, that's a little like Chinese ink painting but it's also very different to, to Chinese ink painting. So if you go to her studio, there may be at least one of those on the wall. She's got an exhibition right now in the middle of Hong Kong. Um, so she'll be able to tell you about that too. You can see her work. But very, very interesting artist. Okay, many of our students are doing further studies. Um, so at, at universities such as this, and we get we keep in touch and we hear about where they're all they're all going. But um, a, a degree in visual studies really does equip students well to go on to further studies. Um, I remember my own, um, when I was finished, when I'd finished school, um, I was interested in art practice, I was also interested in art history, and my parents encouraged me to do the art history degree because they said, you'll get a job that way. If you do art school, you'll never get a job. So, um, <laughs> and you know, I did what they said, but then later I just went to art school anyway, so I did both. <laughs> and so that's how I worked it out. But, a course like ours, um, from my own point of view, I think what's great about it is you get to balance, you get to do some art practice and some theoretical practice. So you're going to be trained or equipped, not just to go down for further studies in art practice, but to go for further studies in art history or in film or in, um, or in art history, film or in aesthetics. You've already got that background. And quite apart from that, visual studies is very broad, so not all of our students go on to do studies in visual arts. Some of them do study in other, or work in other fields or study in other fields because people recognise that our students are very good thinkers, very good at creative thinking and doing, and also generally very nice people. 
So the reputation builds and you know our students have very good likelihood of getting good jobs and being on um, better than, I mean, there's, we get statistics about the kind of salaries that students get when they leave um, school, you know, leave university and visual studies students are among the top ones. Which, the reason I mention it is not because these figures are really so important, but just because people often have the idea that if you do business, you'll leave and you'll immediately be a millionaire, and if you do visual studies, well, of course, it's all hopeless. It's not actually like that. Our students are very well equipped to get, to get um, good jobs and get you know, a reasonable pay compared with students who do other subjects. So what are they doing now? We've got students working on airlines, journalism, nursing, banking and finance, everyday aesthetics, food, jewellery, designers, also teaching art, also working in galleries and art organisations, okay? Probably a lot of them are in these areas, but we have people in all of these areas. So they're finding jobs in all kinds of fields. Okay. So we have certain courses. I don't want to give you too much detail today. You'll have questions, but we have certain courses that everybody must do if they do visual studies. So they are philosophy of the visual arts, introduction to Chinese art, Western art from Romanticism to Modernism, introduction to film studies. So these are the four courses that everybody must do. And then we have many electives, so students can choose from that elective. So if somebody really loves, you know, Chinese art the most, they can do more courses in that, or they can do more courses in um, Western art, or more courses in film, or more courses in aesthetics, or they can do more courses in art practice studio. So all of these options are available. But it's not a course where you just choose one area and you just do that. Everything is always integrated, so you get this all-rounded understanding of art. But you can emphasise one area. And that's it. So, um, well firstly, maybe, um, just has anyone got any questions straight away? Okay, I'll just give you a chance to, to talk amongst yourselves a little bit and then see if there are any questions. And meanwhile, I'll walk around and our student representatives who will now introduce themselves by name. Okay, so the five of us will just wander around to see if you have any questions and, and you know, to answer them um, now. So feel free to hang around and, and and you know, ask questions or talk, or if you need to leave and go and do something else, feel free to do that. So thank you very much, everybody.